Shalom Church, praise God. We're going to start our praise and worship and I just want to share with you from the scripture, book of Psalms, verse chapter 1 and verse 1 and verse 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruits in its season, whose leaf also shall not be them, and whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. That's the promise of God. Whatever that we do will prosper. And when in this time of trouble, as we are here to worship the Lord, where we are is a holy ground. Amen. This is holy ground. And the presence of God is the most powerful place that we should or we can be in. To be away from all trouble and more importantly the holy ground is in our home right now where we are safe with our family and as we give honor to the local law by being in home let's continue to worship the lord in this holy ground and expect great miraculous things to happen for ourselves for our family for our church for our nation and for the world praise the lord let's get ready to worship the lord
Good morning church, good to see you this morning and it's wonderful to have you online with us this morning to uh, join us in this service and uh, we thank you worship team for leading us in worship. We thank you Lord Jesus and also Holy Spirit. Uh, let's pray. Father we thank you this morning that we are here together in the household of God in every of our homes gathering together with the heads of the house, with the family, with the children. We thank you, Lord, that we are uh, uh, standing together by faith and we are gathering together in faith. And we know your presence is in every home and you are the Lord and Savior of every home. And Father, we thank you for blessing each house to this morning. And as they listen to this word this morning, may your mighty word become an impact in their lives. And in this current situation, Lord, you will give them faith, hope, and love. 
and you will establish them with your mighty healing as well and prosper them uh, wherever they are Lord and we thank you uh, for this opportunity that we can worship online as well and we are still gathering together and having fellowship in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth we pray Amen thank you Jesus we thank you this morning Lord Jesus we thank you Lord uh, dear friends and dear family and dear church uh, we, as you know that we are going through some difficulties in our nation because of this virus epidemic uh, nevertheless we will not be moved uh, we will continue because uh, we may not know what God is doing we not, may not know his plan what's happening with this uh, epidemic throughout the whole world global as well as local uh, but I believe that God knows what he's doing I believe and I trust God that God is a great God and our great God who loves us who has a plan and uh, I believe he would just wants us to trust him and have faith in him and be under his cover and while all these things are going to diminish and finish uh, fast we will just wait upon the Lord I believe it's a good opportunity for us to uh, ponder meditate while we're in the house and uh, gather together with our families have a closer relationship and uh, i believe this is good this is good as well as also uh, learning how to be quiet uh, meditating the word and waiting upon the lord this is also very good and uh, especially this lent season this season when we are fasting and praying before easter and i believe that god has a plan for us to remember him Remember Jesus. Remember the work he has done for us on the cross. So this morning I want to share with you about uh, an incident that took place in the book of Exodus, uh, quite similar to what we are facing. There were plagues in Israel and God actually engineered these plagues. God actually summoned these plagues upon the nation of Egypt. And you find that uh, uh, Let's not interpret uh, all this uh, uh, negatively in our nation or throughout the world. And like I said, uh, our understanding will not be able to comprehend what's, what God's understanding is all about. So what we do is just look at what, all, what the solutions that God has provided, what security that God has provided, and what keys He has provided for us to be safe, to be healed, to be strong, and uh, that nothing of, of all these plagues or all these pestilences will touch us and uh, this morning's message is for us to recognize and also remember that our God is our savior and a protector uh, so let's look at the Bible this morning you will see in your slide uh, Exodus 12 verse 3 Exodus 12 verse 3 says speak to the old speak to all the congregation of Israel saying on the 10th day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to their fathers houses a lamb for a household in Exodus 12 verse 7 says then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the door post two door posts and the lintel of the house in which they eat in Exodus 12 verse 13 says the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are and when I see the blood I will pass over and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. In that time when uh, Moses was uh, about to deliver the Israelites from Egypt, God had a great plan and because of the stubbornness, because of the wickedness and the evil of the land, God had to do this is to send the plagues but God had another powerful and richer plan for his children so that his children will not be touched and it is amazing amazing to see how he uh, began to coordinate this and manage this throughout the whole of Israel and at that time uh, God introduced uh, Moses to Israel and Moses came into the picture and he is a type of a deliverer, type of Christ Jesus who delivers us. At the same time, we find that there was instructions given through him and those instructions went through every household. And I believe that the same thing 
uh, has to happen with us. Uh, we need to take our instructions very carefully from the Word. And as much as you begin to look at this message this morning, uh, I hope and pray that you'll be able to capture this. And uh, looking at this, uh, Passover or this Passover event in the book of Exodus uh, helps us to see three very important things. Number one, Jesus is the lamb that Moses told the household to take the lamb and sacrifice the lamb. Jesus is the lamb. He is the sacrifice. Number two, his blood became a very powerful uh, signature on the door, or the sign on the doorpost. And when the blood was put on the doorpost of the house, that became a protection, a shield. And number three, uh, the love of Jesus, the love of God, was shared among all the household, all, all the households sitting together and eating the lamb. Uh, is like having fellowship and communion together with Jesus. And I believe that God wants us to do that. He wants us to have the Lamb Christ Jesus positioned in our lives. At the same time, apply the blood uh, on the doorposts of our hearts. Apply the blood in every one of our hearts in the house uh, so that this becomes a protection. And when the blood was placed upon the doorposts of the house, the Bible says that when the plague or the death or the angel of death or the plague passed by uh, the, the, the homes, it did not enter the house. There was no calamity. There was no death in the house and the household was protected because of the blood of the lamb and because they were hiding. Now I believe that this is what God wants us to do. It is a time of hiding together with Jesus and with the family. And I believe that God wants us to do a powerful thing as well to also remember that we are overcomers. He stationed us, positioned us to become overcomers and Christ's death on the cross is not for emptiness, is not for null and void. Christ's death on the cross is something very powerful, something very important uh, that we need to apply in our daily lives. That, uh, that Christ on the cross is the same as the Lamb that was with His lights in the household. He became our salvation. He cleansed our sins. So the blood of Jesus cleanses us. And the cross uh, uh, where Jesus was crucified takes away all our sins. And He became the Lamb. As well as that, Jesus took on uh, another role. He is our priest. He is our advocate. He is our shield. So Jesus, who took away the sins of the world, took all our sins away by the blood, took all sins away because of the sacrifice on the cross, and then became priest in the throne of God, became priest became a powerful, in a powerful position, uh, he became a priest to take care of all of our daily uh, weaknesses, errors, whatever that we go through. And then next verse you will see in Hebrews 10, verse 12, 13 and 14, you see in the slide, Hebrews 10, 12, 13 and 14. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemy should make a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected all time those who are being sanctified. Uh, my friends and my brothers and sisters, uh, we need to understand that uh, in the Old Testament, they had to go through many difficult uh, details in sacrifices and different sacrifices for different sins and different sorts of weaknesses. But here, Jesus, he offered himself as a lamb sacrifice and his offering, his offering became us one single sacrifice for sins. And with that, the word says, uh, by one single offering, he has perfected all of us. And uh, in verse 12 also says that he sat down at the right hand of God, which means that he has completed his work in taking care of 
the sins, taking care of the plagues, uh, taking care of all the uh, uh, the darts of the enemies that are directed against us, whether it's from our flesh or whether it's from outside, from our enemies, all those are taken care of by his single offering, by his blood as a Lamb of, Lamb of God. And I believe that we need to place our trust at this time, put our foundation on Christ Jesus, Jesus our Lamb, Jesus our Priest, Jesus our Advocate, Jesus our Shield. And so when the Bible says that when He offered a single sacrifice for our sins and He sat down at the right hand of God, it tells us that He is interceding for us with that one sacrifice. He's interceding for us day and night. Jesus is interceding for you. He's praying for your situation, whether it can be economic situation that you're going through because of a job or because of the, this plague or because of this uh, uh, problem that uh, we are locked down or we are, we, are, we are restricted movements or whatever they are, the nation is uh, going through. As we go through, we are in a place of privilege because God is in charge and God cares for us. So he has a plan, he has a solution for your life. And you know, one of the most powerful things that can happen to us is the covenant blessing of Jesus will flow to us and we shall be established and we will continue to live not just ordinarily but in abundant lifestyle. And God has planned for us. And I believe that His love is so powerful his grace is so powerful that we need to just uh, rest in Him. And uh, this is one solution that I'm going to share with you uh, that we can find in the book of Job, in Job chapter 1, verse 5. Let's look at this solution this morning. Let's ponder and activate the solution in our homes uh, so that we will pass through this time right, in a wonderful way. In Job chapter 1, verse 5, but when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that children, my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And this is what Job did. And if you know in Job's life, you find that the devil challenged uh, uh, God. He said to God, uh, I can't touch him because you have put a hedge around him. You have protected him. You have covered whatever he has, properties. He covered his family, covered his even his uh, business, whatever he's doing, and prospered him. He has put the hedge of uh, protection, the hedge of prosperity, and the hedge of glory around him. And Job was protected because of one thing Job did. He did this continually, Bible says. He would offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. That means he offered burnt offerings for each of the family members and cleansed their sin at the same time interceding. This is called intercession. What Job did was he was interceding exactly as how Jesus is doing for us right now. He's interceding for us. He's praying for us. And in this solution, you can see one of the key in the solution is that Job maintained the altar in his house. The altar is so important. And you, you find that the altar is, is, is such an important position or place for you to come together as a family. And that's where all your protection, that's where all your shield, and that's where nothing can touch you. The Bible tells us that, you know, uh, more than anything else, more than anything else, we are more than conquerors. So it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 3, 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Romans 8, 35 says this, Who can separate us from the love of Christ? So at the altar, Job stood before God to ask for the mercy and the love of God to be showered upon his family. And that love is the one that was able to keep him away from distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger or sword. 
Going further in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, 38, and 39, he says, Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, for I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And this is what Job did. When he went and established the altar in his house, when he went and prayed uh, with the sacrifices and he communicated with God and and uh, the, the only way that God can communicate with you is through the Lamb Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth and life. And when you cling on to Him, hold on to Him, you're holding on to the Lamb. And when you hold on to the Lamb, you're holding on to three things that will come upon your life. The atmosphere of faith, the atmosphere of hope, and the atmosphere of love is established in every house where the altar is established, the key, the altar, the contact point with Christ Jesus, with God in heaven. So the same thing Abraham did when he came over to the promised land. The first thing that he did was he took all the stones and put together and made an altar. And at that altar, he called upon the name of God, call upon God. And every time he was in trouble, he will go back to the altar and call upon God. And the same thing Jacob did. And every time he had an encounter, it was an encounter at the altar. He made an altar and worshiped God and called upon the name of God. And when you do that, my friends, when you worship God, when you call upon God at the altar in your house, gather your family together, put them at the altar. And at that altar, you present yourself as a living sacrifice. You present your family as a living sacrifice. And you don't have to pray any other, every other detailed prayer, but just one prayer, Lord, May your faith, may your hope, may your love come upon the family. The atmosphere of faith, hope and love into every heart. After the Lord Jesus has cleansed us from all our sins, He floods us with that faith, hope and love. We can live, and not ordinarily, but we live in a supernatural way, in a powerful way. A lot of things can happen outside. But let's not focus on those things. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to discuss about it. We don't want to amplify what virus it is or what kind of a sickness is going on, whatever statistics. All these could be frightening, fearful. So I encourage you, don't have to WhatsApp about all these things. But I believe what we need to WhatsApp at this moment is send messages of faith, hope and love. Not fear, not anxiety, not panic. Because our God is a God of order. He's not a God of confusion. He doesn't want us to be confused in our mind. He wants to bring order. He wants to bring stillness in our life. And we live in that stillness. Be still. Be holy. Stand before God in a mighty way. And when God sees us in that faith, He's moved. He's moved by the faith that you have in your heart. He's moved by the hope that you have. He's moved by the love that you have. And when we begin to taste of the faith, hope and love at that altar, that's where there is victory. There is power. There is glory. And let me pray with you this morning that you will also go through the altar time in your house. Take this opportune time to pray. In our WhatsApp group in our church, uh, you will notice so we have assigned 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, 10 p.m. in the night. Both these times, uh, let's gather together in intercessory prayer and we will be posting to you what to pray and, and uh, any other things that you need to know. And any other things that you need to know about the our local news, whatever, we will summarize that and we will place it in the WhatsApp group so that for you to pray and uh, for you to ponder upon the truth. Remember, the truth is very important. But more than all the truth, the truth is this, that God has given us a victorious, overcoming life. We are overcomers. We will overcome this. You will overcome this. Let's pray that you'll be finished by two weeks. Let's pray that all the statistics will be controlled. Let's pray for the nation, for the government, 
Let's pray for the medical staff, the people who work very hard. Let's pray for pastors and churches who are working very hard, uh, especially this difficult time and we can't meet each other, uh, but we can only do things online. And in case if you need us to pray for you or even visit you, we will be able to visit you, uh, not in, in numbers, but just maybe one, two plus pastors will be able to come. If, if there is an emergency, we will come and visit you. And we pray that all will be well with you and stay blessed and be blessed throughout this week. We will be in touch with you and God bless you. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your amazing love and power upon your people. We thank you for the blood that's ever flowing all the time. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for that one-time sacrifice you did on the cross for us. And help us, Lord, to uh, make our way in a step to establish the altars in our heart, establish the altars in our home, in our working place. And at that altar, we will prioritize our time and give our time to Him and make Him the great, our Lord, our Savior, our healer, our protector. And the Lord may put a hedge upon every house and cover every house with your blood and touch every home and every individual with a mighty faith, hope and love. And let the atmosphere of the faith and hope and love be transferred to be showered upon every home by the work of the Holy Spirit. And may the pipe, mighty power of the Holy Spirit bring healing for those who are weak and for those who are uh, going through difficult times financially to bless them so they will have amazing doors open for their lives. So we thank you, Father, for you are a great God who loves us, who saved us, and who's always watching over us. And we thank you for this Sunday that they pay your people uh, gladly worship you and rejoice and serve you. We thank you for all this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. See you again next Sunday. Thank you for joining us. During this season, we will be collecting our tithes and offering via online banking. Here are the details on the screen. Have a blessed week and see you again next Sunday.